everyone, I'm Aline. Hi, I'm Lindsay. Welcome to our bi-weekly tutorial. Sounds great. Hey, Lindsay. Whenever I'm looking for a good microphone, there's a term that always puzzles me. The electrical impedance. Do you know what that means? Well, of course. It's an important concept in condenser microphones. In general, every conductor has the effect of blocking the flow of current. And the part that hinders the action of the alternating current is usually referred to as impedance. The degree of blocking can be expressed by resistance in ohms. Oh, I see. So it is a measure of the resistance to alternating current. Exactly. So are all the signals a type of alternating current? Yes, because they have both negative and positive voltages, namely electric pressure. When an audio signal voltage is applied, the microphone impedance controls the flow of alternating current in the audio circuit. Oh, so what is the best impedance for a microphone? Normally, the output impedance of a microphone ranges is specified. For low impedance microphones with impedance of less than 600 ohms, they can be used on cables a thousand feet or longer without loss of sound quality. So professional microphones usually have low impedance, like between 150 and 250 ohms. How about for high impedance mics? Do they need shorter cables? That's true. For high impedance microphones, the length of the cables should be less than 20 feet, which is about 6 meters. Because with longer cables, the sound will be dull and deepened. Wow, Lindsay, that's very clear. Um, can you give me some good examples? Yeah, sure. The impedance for three of our USB mics are 50 to 80 ohms, and the internal impedance of XLR cardioid condenser mic XMic 10L is 50 ohms. Impressive. And I've tested their sound quality before, which are great. 